Hey everyone, it's Tom from Blender Tutor, and in part one of this part two tutorial series, we're going to be going over animating our text using the free commotion add-on, which makes it super easy to offset animation between different objects. So my wife and I just moved from Los Angeles to Chicago, and it's already snowed almost 20 inches since we got here. Since I haven't been able to go outside much, that inspired me to create this chilly text animation that we're going to be going over today. By the way, you can get access to the project files for part one and part two of this tutorial series on my Patreon. Patrons get access to all the project files to my tutorials, as well as exclusive material packs each month. All right, so here is the finished project file right here. And you can see it's very simple. I just have a plane with a little bit of thickness. We have all of the letters here, which are animating and they're just looping. I have a few lights and uh, a camera. This isn't too intense to create the uh, animation, although once we do get into the shading in the next tutorial, um, the material setup is a little more in depth, which is why I broke this into two parts. But anyway, let's get started and let's create a new project. And go ahead and save real quick. All right, so go ahead and just delete the light and the cube, and let's bring in some text. So go into edit mode to be able to edit your text, and I'm just gonna type out chili, all caps, and then I'm gonna rotate on the X by 90 degrees. Go into front view, and let's go into our text settings down here. Uh, for alignment, I'm gonna set that to center. And for font, I'm gonna choose a font that I downloaded for free off defont.com. So I'll have this link in the description, but the font is called Alpha Kind, and it is free to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and in your font drop down right here under regular, you can go to the folder and go to your fonts folder over here and find the font that you wanna use. Here we go. Now under geometry, I'm gonna give this a little extrusion. I want it to look pretty square, so I don't want it to be too deep. I'm gonna probably just do 0 0.1 for that. That looks fine. And then for bevel, I'm gonna do uh, 0.01, and I'll turn the resolution up to 12. Probably not necessary. I'll bring that down to like eight. We just want the beveled edges there to catch a little extra light. And once you've done that, we can go ahead and right click on our text. Actually, before we do that, let's just scale this up real quick. So let's do scale. So hit S and press two. So once you've scaled that up, right click and hit convert to mesh. And now we have an editable mesh for our text. And what I'm gonna do is, in edit mode, select all, you can hit A to select all, then hit M on your keyboard, and merge by distance. You can see we removed 270 vertices. Basically, I think uh, when you extrude text in Blender, it doesn't connect the extruded sides to the front or the beveled uh, edges. So you can see we're getting some weird shading right now. So what I'm gonna do is go down to normals over here in the object data tab over here and turn on auto smooth. And you can see that kind of fixed our weird shading issues. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go back into edit mode and let's select all and hit P and separate by loose parts. That's gonna basically create a separate object for each letter. And the last thing we're gonna do with all of those selected is right click and set origin origin to geometry. And now each one will have its own origin point individual from each other. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we will need the commotion add-on. So you can download the commotion add-on from the GitHub link that is in the description. And once you're on this page, you'll just scroll down, go to how to install, and you'll just download it right here. So you just click on that and it's gonna download. 
I already have it installed, so I don't need to do that. But once you do that, open up Avid, you'll go to Preferences, and you'll go to Add-ons over here. You'll go to Install, and then you'll just go to the folder that you downloaded that add-on in. Find Commotion, and hit Install. Once you've done that, it should show up in your feed, but uh, I'm going to search for it, and you'll just make sure you check the checkbox right here. And once it's installed, it'll actually check for updates itself, so you don't need to constantly uninstall and reinstall new versions. And then once that is installed, you should be able to hit N on your keyboard in the 3D view, and you'll have a little commotion tab down here. So the way it works is basically you'll need to apply the animation to your object before you get to using this. Commotion will automatically offset objects that you've animated by a specific amount of frames, and it could even do multiple objects in groups. On top of that, you could also animate more than just like motion or scale or rotation. You can animate materials and offset those. You could do shape keys, object data, and you can offset it by different things like the 3D cursor. You could do it by name of the objects. Um, so in our case, we have text, text of one, two, three, four, five. Um, I could do it by that. You could offset it by random. So this has a lot of different parts to this tool that are super powerful, but we're gonna keep it pretty simple for today. With all of our objects selected, um, before we animate anything, let's change the pivot point from bounding box to individual origins. And that way with all these selected, we could like rotate them all separately. Okay, so with all of our letters selected, Let's add a keyframe on frame one of our timeline. So hit I and I'm gonna just add a location keyframe. Then I'm gonna move forward one second. I am animating at 24 frames a second. So you could just move forward to however many frames one second is. Hit another uh, location keyframe right there. And then let's just go to half that length. So it'll be 12 seconds. And I'm gonna hit G Z and then hit hold control and move up to one meter. If you hold down control, that'll snap it on increments of one. So with that up there, I'm gonna hit I and location. And now we could watch that. And it's a very boring robotic movement right now. So let's go to the animation tab up here. I'm gonna change this window right here to the graph editor and what we can do is with all of our keyframes down here in the dope sheet selected, they should automatically be all highlighted. Um, we can just go to key right here, interpolation mode, and set that to Bezier. And automatically, that's going to make it a much smoother animation. But I'm going to do one more thing to just kind of make it a little snappier. So we're gonna change the pivot point in the graph editor, which you could do right here, to the uh, individual, individual centers. And now I'm just gonna scale up. Um, let's do like 1.5. And now it's a little bit snappier. You could even go further than that if you want, but that looks okay. And so we're gonna have to clean this up a little bit. So we're gonna, we just need the Z location for these keyframes. So I'm gonna go through all of our letters and just really quick delete those. So um, I want the Z location so I could highlight the Y and X locations up here and just hit X on my keyboard to delete it. That's just gonna kinda clean up our graph editor. So I'm gonna do that for all of them real quick. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select our top text up here and hit the Z location. Hit N on my keyboard and that's gonna bring out this little pop-up on the side. We're gonna click on modifiers and then go to cycles 
And what's that, what that's gonna do is just loop our animation over and over again. So now you can see our Y is just constantly bouncing up and down. And we're gonna do that for all of them. So we can just hit this little button right here. It's like a little clipboard with an arrow pointing up. And now I can select my Z location on the next letter. And I could hit that and paste it. And that adds the uh, looping animation for that. And I'm gonna do that for all of my letters now. So now if we hit play in the timeline, you can see all of our letters are bouncing up and down um, forever, basically. And now we are where we need to be to use the commotion add-on. So I want it to start being offset from our first letter, the C. So what I'm gonna do is select the C and with that, with the uh, lighter orange color around it, I'm gonna hit Shift S, which will bring up this little radial menu, and I'm gonna do cursor to selected. And now we're gonna select all of these, but you still want your C to be the first one. Hit N on your keyboard, and go back to Commotion. So we could turn off everything but Object, and we want it to be offset by the 3D cursor. And we want it, the threshold um, is how many objects it will offset per frame, basically. Um, so we just want one. And for offset, we can, we could do, let's do 1.5. And let's hit offset animation. And you can see that just automatically offset. You can see all the keyframes down here now. And now we have this cool little bouncing animation with all of our letters following each other, the little delay. And it is as simple as that. And if you don't like how it turned out or if something went wrong for you, you could just hit Control Z a couple times and now it is back to normal and you could change um, whatever settings. If, if that offset wasn't enough for you, I could do that to like two frames instead. That looks kind of cool. So I'm gonna keep that as is. And that is the basic gist of this tutorial. It's really simple to create some nice, bouncing, satisfying um, letter text animations using the Commotion add-on. So I'm just gonna add in a ground real quick and we'll set up our camera to leave us ready to do the materials in the next tutorial. So I'm just gonna reset the, world, uh, the cursor to the world origin. I'll bring in a plane. I'm gonna scale that up quite a bit. You could always adjust that more if we need to. And then I'm gonna hit Control Alt Zero on my numpad to align my camera. And as you might have noticed in my final animation, that was in the isometric view. So I'm gonna change the camera type from perspective to orthographic. And I'm going to look at the rotation of our camera real quick. So for Y, I want that to be zero. Um, let's set this to like 60, maybe, maybe 70 is okay. And then for the Z rotation, I'm gonna do negative 30, I mean negative 25. You could always adjust that. And now I could just kind of move our camera around using G. And let's play that and see how it fits in our camera view. Maybe I'll bring that down a little. And the other thing we could do is affect the scale of our orthographic camera. So the lower the number gets, the more zoomed in it gets. Uh, maybe I'll bring this up to six. Cool. So the last thing we want to do is let's set up our timeline so that we have a perfect looping animation. 
Um, I'm gonna wanna render out, let's do four seconds for this. So we animated one full second of it, but the final frame, 24, is the same exact frame as the first frame, so we could actually subtract one frame from that. So let's say I wanted to do four seconds times 24 would be 96. I'm gonna have to delete a few of those frames so that it doesn't repeat some frames at the end of the animation. So let's do 93, sorry, not 96, 93. And if we watch that, it should loop perfectly back to the first frame when it ends. And cool. That looks good. The last thing I'm gonna do, I can see the C is kind of clipping through the bottom, so is uh, the H. So I'm just gonna lower the floor a little bit. It's okay, these don't need to be perfectly aligned with the floor, they could be floating a little bit above it. And I might even make this camera a little bit further out, so maybe like 6.25. Cool. So that about wraps up part one of this two-part series. I hope you learned how to use the commotion add-on a little bit. I definitely recommend that you guys e uh, experiment with it and test it out on different things. Obviously, it doesn't need to just be text. You can animate any objects and offset them and get some cool looks. Mixing that with the cycle modifier in the uh, node editor can give you some really cool, easy to make looping animations. So definitely experiment with that stuff. And in part two, we'll be going over how to create the icy materials uh, used for the final render, as well as using a free add-on to get this nice looking snow on top. So part two should be up in a few days after this. And once it is up, I'm gonna have a link for it right here. So if you're watching this, if that is out, you'll see the link right now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in part two. Take care.